Is Eric on? He is. Hi, Eric. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Perfect. I didn't get a donut, though. You didn't get a donut. None of us did. Or what was he trying to bribe people with? Um, a spindrift, uh, sparkling oh. water. Yeah, I'm just trying to get the zoom up, but yes. Okay, do you want to try doing this? That's a rough one. Okay, Evan's going to kick us off. No, we have additions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Any additions or modifications to the agenda? Uh, two potential. Um, one is tomorrow night, the LCPC full board is going to re review the um, proposal for assessor services. Okay. So it, in in the thought was we would try and get an ad out as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So the thought would be to appoint a town representative to serve with the, the hiring committee. Yeah, with hiring somebody. Um, and the second item would be um, maybe you've got this on another agenda, but a uh, placement of the weather vane in the lobby area. I'm wondering if we could hold that one off till uh, <laughs> Yeah. Do we need to do that soon? Well, we can. Um, my only concern is um, there's a fair amount of work that would go into preparing a base and all that stuff. If it's if it's just a no go, then I won't bother with any of that stuff. Um, if it's a possible, then I wouldn't mind getting started on that. But we it's it's not critical. <laughs> I'm retired and right. It's not critical, and you're retired. Noted. <laughs> uh, let's retired, hold off. Not retired. <laughs> I heard you. Let's hold off on that. Uh, if you don't mind, just because we have a really packed agenda. And I'm a little worried about us getting through it. Right. As long as we can get it on a future yep. agenda as soon as possible. Um, I do have one other change for us. We can strike the planning <laughs> commission appointment. Uh, they'd like a little bit more time to uh, meet with the individual who's expressed interest. Perfect. There you go. I just saved us a bunch of time. Right. Perfect. Okay. Um, so reviewing orders and invoices. Evan? I do my best job that I can at this. It's, um, it's not highlighted. Uh, Charles Gallanter, uh, mailing for planning position, that's 293.22. Are these just in this big general no. packet? Or? We don't have copies of it this time, Rosemary, oh, okay. it's been away. Okay. If there's any questions, please. We're going in the right direction. Uh, <clears throat> no 22B total uh, for the Historic Society. Uh, foreign internet and a library. Um, no, oh, that's part, that's part of consolidated. Sorry. Uh, county plumbing and heating for boiler cleaning, two hundred seventy dollars and twelve cents. This library. It's a fifty dash eight. So would that be you guys? Uh, oh, eight would be fifty dash seven. Yeah. Yeah. Fifty dash eight is right in front of us. It, it is uh, public works. Public works. So it'll be the boiler at the counter. Up. It came in the dollar. Okay, they got charged to you. Uh, Dale Percy for stone construction projects. Uh, Four thousand three hundred sixty nine dollars and seventeen cents. Another invoice for Dale Percy for stone loan, $3,123.80, totaling $7,492.97. Uh, Gorman Group, Summer Calcium, $4,792.59. Uh, HP Fairfield for a gearbox, $2,671.09. Ingram Books. Book on tape, grant fund purchase, uh, adoption author, all three of those totaling one thousand sixty-seven dollars and eighty-two cents. Is JJ Keller a normal expense? Safety equipment? No. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, that's seven thousand 
for like seven hundred twelve dollars and twenty cents. Uh, Jack at the course for Historic Society Heat Propane one hundred twenty dollars thirty nine cents. Johnson uh, Hardware and Rental Battery for fourteen ninety nine. Uh, pickup and delivery two hundred and ten. Steel Wool three dollars and seventy five cents. Uh, and GF Supply. Four hundred and nine at seventy dollars sixty one cents totaling six hundred ninety nine thirty five. Um, Lark label for steak. Tree board expenses six hundred forty seven ninety five. LWI salt truck. Uh, winter fireman supplies one hundred and thirty eight sixty. Health insurance, dental insurance. Uh, RK Miles for lumber for the Conservation Commission, 77, 76, 78. Uh, another expense for 114, 39, totaling 191, 17. Uh, wood of wood, wooden wood signs uh, for Leah's playground sign, 173, 75. Father's father playground. Those are the only ones I see that are on the experience. Any questions on any of the expenses? Oh, nope. Okay. Uh, next up, I review and approve minutes from past November 7th and 9th meetings. I would move to approve the 7th with one potential change, which would be I on page two um, in the second paragraph, about a third of the way down, I went back and actually listened to the uh, the tape or the mm -hmm. video. And um, so where it says, um, I, I was commenting um, and where it says is whether the board has the ability to propose putting surplus funds into the budget line items. There's a fairly critical, at least in my mind, part that didn't get in there, which was the first part of that sentence was, um, does the board have the ability to deal with surplus funds? And I did say, and whether or not. So I would like to add the phrase, does the board have the ability to deal with surplus funds? So you're motion to approve with that amendment? With that amendment. Second. Uh, motion and a second. All those in any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I just have it. Uh, that was for the seventh and the ninth, and then you made the amendment to the seventh. Okay. I didn't. I didn't. Um, mine was just for the seventh. The motion was just for the seventh. The motion was just for the seventh. Okay. So we still have the ninth. Would anyone like to make a motion for the ninth? I will. Okay. Move we accept the man's presenting. So, okay. motion in a second. All those in favor? Aye. Sure. And Eric said aye, even though I couldn't hear him. Eric, are you able to turn your mic on now? Can you hear me now? Yep. I can turn your video off too. Yep. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Can you hear me still? Like. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why it shut off the mic, but Okay. Um does are there any select board issues or concerns out there? I've got one thing. Go ahead. I would like to have a public acknowledgement for a certain select board member on uh November 11th. 
at 11 a.m. Uh, Mark uh, Woodward rang the town clock bell at a, uh, 11 times in recognition of uh, the veterans for, uh, well, uh, Veterans Day. And that was the end of World War I. And uh, I thank him for it. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Thank you very much. Thank you for texting. I was in the bell tower when Eric texted. Is that you? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. It's great to hear the bells ring. It is. Um, okay, any other is uh, select board issues or concerns? <laughs> okay, treasurer's report. I think that's going to wait for the next meeting. Well, we have the current budget status in front of us. Uh, I questions. Well, in case, the so I guess just noting that. Rosemary, we spent too much. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Was, was there anything question. else for Rosemary? I didn't have anything else. For okay. okay. Next up is public works uh, report. Pretty good. Hi. So, we can talk about grant project. The grant itself is almost completely, and Brian sat down and had one time a meeting with Brad, so that was kind of like, um, we got the road built at the Arcatorium. The path was in the late, so we actually ran out of uh, the labor. Uh, the salt truck is fixed and it is back to 100% of the motor. Uh, to replace the culvert on the class four section square and uh, put it in the motor gravel in two different spots on the square. The high park side and then the other side. And, uh, the current project. Um, we got the salt drying distribution area all set up with the tanks on the head and the tight down by the fuel tanks. So they're still mm -hmm. Hold on one second. Can you hear okay, Eric? Yes. Uh, it's not loud, but I can make it out. And uh, we got kind of in the plan purchases a little bit. I want to talk about it, but so there's a set of uh, blades I would like to get for the salt truck called the Nordic Move. They're one foot segments and they conform to the road a little bit as you're driving. So if you've got where the wheel ruts are and stuff, they scrape better, cleaner. And they're coated in rubber uh, around the car body so they're quieter. But the other towns are using them, and there's a, a known reduction in salt. And then asked us to look into them. Because they're scraping cleaner. Yeah, less stuff to know. I explain what, what they do. They scrape. Yeah, they're uh, one foot segments. So yeah, I, and they're right over the wheel. Right? No, they're on the plow blade itself. So instead of the traditional solid edge, there's uh -huh. a plate that you pull on, and there's uh, the, the one foot, and they can move a little bit side to side, but up and down up to three inches. So as you're plowing, they can conform to the road better. Huh. A lot of towns are using them on the black top. With so far, every town's been different in the reduction of salt. But a lot of towns aren't using brine tools. Why would it reduce the salt? Oh, uh, you're not not having to melt as much. It's not great the road clear. clear. No, it's getting a cleaner script. Thank you. Appreciate it. So it would just be on the salt truck because the salt truck is the truck that plows the paved road sections. Yeah. And that's that's not on that's not on the I just wanted to put word out on what their thoughts were about it. You know what the potential cost is? I was waiting for two different vendors to get back to me because it's uh it's a new in the last few years, so there's no one's really stocking in our plow, the nine foot plow, where all the other ones are either 10 or 11. And they're, you know, 
So they were looking into prices and going to get back to me. And I'm hoping to have them the next or the next meeting. It sounds like we should talk about it in the next meeting if we have you're gonna have more information, but it sounds intriguing for sure. Does it affect the lifelong of the uh, the pavement? It doesn't affect the life of the pavement, uh, but it is a longer lasting blade. So because they're one foot, uh, you can move them around the blade. So if, if one like the crown part of the road starts wearing a little bit more, you can just unbolt them and move them over to the other side and bring them over. So you, they're seeing three years plus out of the life of the blade instead of two. And this would be for the for the main plow or the or the one? No, just the main. Just the main plow. Yeah. Okay. So I think I hear you looking for guidance from us as to whether or not we should. Well, he still is waiting back for pricing, okay. and I think they're hang on. Let me finish that. Um, whether or not you should solicit the prices and bring it back to the board. Yeah. It's not well. I feel that they're a good necessity. I'd like to try it, but I was curious if they are a little bit more than the price of gold on there because they're. Well, just to be clear, you've already asked for pricing from vendors. I have, but they can only give you pricing up to the 10 and 11 foot plows because that's the only thing they haven't uh, So they didn't have the nine foot exact yet. Well, as an individual member, I'd certainly be interested in finding out what the cost is. I'm a little confused now because if you're we're asking for prices on the 10 foot and 11 foot and they don't have them on the nine foot, does that mean you'd go to other vendors or like, I don't no, know. They, they just didn't have any, no one bought one for the nine foot yet. Our plow is the truck a little different setup. Than they standardly set up on the trucks. But they can price but it. They can, them. yes. The, the, the vendor itself out of, out of Canada, has a listing for nine, ten, and eleven. I don't speak French. I tried calling. Uh, it doesn't work out. Okay. Different problem. Okay. Okay. I mean, I'm. I agree. If you're already looking for pricing, then when you get the pricing back, we can have a com more informed conversation. Exactly. I mean, do you have a ballpark? I mean, what's it for a ten foot? A ten foot is like thirty-eight hundred bucks. Each segment is no the whole set of double dome. Okay, where the one piece bars are twenty. Is that Canadian thirty eight hundred? I don't think so. <laughs> so okay. my suggestion would be when you come back and with yeah. with a pricing, be prepared or Brian or whoever to say that it's within the you know within our budgeted amount to be able to purchase those items. Chances are we'll never know whether it saves on salt or not, because uh, the weather know. conditions will determine. <sighs> me. That is uh, one thing I want to add. So we're not tracking. It's hard to track. I talked to Brian about this. It's going to be hard to track dollars because of the salt price has changed. All right. So I'm tracking tons this year. Those the vitamin tons we use and gallon per hour. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. I, I just wanted to recognize that uh, Jason very nicely sent me pictures of the repair that the guys did on the uh, on the uh, salt truck, and it was really nice looking work. They saved us saved us a good bit of money and did a nice job. Well, and you were ready for the snow when it came. Excellent. Okay. Do you have anything else? Well. I knew under the greater. I didn't get any information from the gentleman in the last few days, except the day that I sent everybody. Right. So, it's on the boat. It is what he told me. Yeah, it was supposed to be here, then it was on the boat, supposed to be in here. Did you hear it in the port? Yeah. Has he ever told you how long it is after it gets off the boat? <laughs> is that like another month, probably? No, he said once it gets there, they just got to arrange it. This week said last time. But he said that once the grader gets there, they arrange to pick it up and bring it to Richmond. And then they set it up with the walking runner. So, 
They told us two weeks a long time ago. That's what I, that's what I thought. Okay, well, yeah, we can't wait to, to hear more about the, about the greater getting off the boat. <laughs> 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 Any questions for Jason? Did anybody show up on Friday to inspect the greater? Not yet. No. Why? What is that about? There's clearly more to the story here. This was our greater RFP that we put out uh, where we had offered anybody who was interested in inspecting the greater before purchase, rather than making Jason set up lots of individual appointments, we had kind of an open house Friday morning. I gotcha. Well, didn't have to buy many donuts. But it wasn't mandatory. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <clears throat> okay. Um, out of my way. Plan purchases. Thanks, Jason. We'll chat more later. <laughs> Then purchase is like in about two seconds, I think. All right. So for our planned purchases, uh, these are all public works. Uh, we've got two front tires for uh, one of the tandems, uh, plow and wing cutting uh, teeth for one of the tandems, and new cutting teeth for the grader. Which grader? Uh, I'm going to turn this one over to Jason because he's going to be able to explain the situation better than I can. I'll go down the list. The tires and cutting edges are for truck 19. Uh, it was tandem you have. And the greater, the bits or for, are for the greater that we have now, but we're keeping the uh, plates that hold the bits and the bits go on the new greater. And we're putting the regular carabide edge back on the greater we just sell it. So the new grader's not coming with the uh, you know, rotary depth plate, the regular straight yeah. cut plate. Okay. Do you use the grader much between now and when our new grader comes? That That's could be a trick question. question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that you're not going to have to. We do use it when we're going ice boat, but I don't see it building up the time the grader is potentially sold or potentially. So. Okay. But the bits that we have on it are worn out. So when the new grader comes, I'd like to be able to set the new, you know, everything up on it. Very good. So we're just, we're not putting this on the old grader. The we're not putting this on the old grader. So. Okay. How would we like to proceed? Yeah, oh, yep. We did. We asked Jeff. Yeah, and Jordan, the place that we get the cutting bits from, said that they were. Well, there's a lot of times they change that stuff. Yeah, we had to make sure we ordered it because a lot of them get the mold work side of the piece. We made sure that we can send it. Thanks, Greg. Okay. These are all within the. They're all less than 5,000. Yep. Meet the budget requirements. Yep. Move saying. to approve. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Any discussion? Are you not talking for a reason? You're abnormally quiet. I'm staring at him. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Okay. Sometimes I like to be mysterious, Beth. Okay. Look yep. at that the record. Got it. <laughs> so, okay. So, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Have it. Okay. Um, Jenna's promise. Hi, no, hiring committee. What? Let's get that one off the list. The hire, it's an add to the agenda. So, the hiring committee for the DCL. Um, oh. Planning Commission for the assessor. Yeah, so that really basically is just uh, appointing a person to work with each town who, for the assessor position. 
So the planning, there's a request from the planning commission to have somebody on a hiring committee to determine, to basically interview and determine who we hire as the assessor for the county. Right. That's correct. No, from LCPC. LCPC, from oh, wow. County. Um, would you be opposed to doing it? Would I do it? Yeah, I would do it. Okay. I'm motion to appoint Duncan as our town representative for the hiring committee. Uh, he spearheads a lot here. And he has the town's best interest at heart. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Yes. Yeah. A second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Same. Eyes have it. Okay. Thank you, Duncan. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, okay, Jenna's promise VCDP grant documents. All right. So we have. You skip it over the commission. Um, we got a note. Somebody was mentioning that. that... Uh, I got a note from Paul Warden that he'd like a little more time to meet with. Uh. Adrian, are you aware that you have a policy on how those appointments are made? That you have to advertise for them in the news and citizen? And notice that when they, in your post on the council form, you do not include the vacancy on the planning commission. So the word is not out for the vacancies. I did make a more recent post that includes the planning commission. I don't you know you have to put it in the paper. Though. Senior policy. Stop. Where did my stop go? That's looking for the paper. <laughs> <laughs> Let's circle back to that one. Yeah. Um. We're we're not taking it up we'll tonight, it back. regardless. So. Okay, Jenna's promise. So uh, Jenna's promise, we have uh, a couple items in front of us. The first of which is the sub-grantee agreement uh, between the town and, let's see, this is officially Jenna Ray Tatro L3C um, for the purpose of the Grant funds for the uh, reconstruction of the Barrows building, and then I've got a couple of follow-ups to that that are that we can take up uh, individually. Um, what do you mean you have a couple of follow-ups? What does that mean? So we also have two other requests uh, that are not, they don't require any signature items, but uh, two requests uh, for the town's attorney's time. Uh, one of which is um, another requirement for the grant is that we need to obtain a guarantee uh, that the, let's see, that is, is a final backstop for the to make sure that the obligations are met, and if they aren't, uh, that the town would receive the Barrows Building property in compensation if the if Jenna's promises obligations are not met. Um, we don't have there. There it's is the collateral. Yeah, th there is not a standard form for this, uh, so we're going to have to get something created. And the request from uh, LCPC and Jenna's Promise would be for the town's attorney to do that. That expense is reimbursable from grant administration funds. So the, the town attorney would be drafting a surety agreement? Yes. And there's no standard surety agreement for these? Not that. Uh, BCDP has been able to provide us with, and we have asked. That's amazing. That, that this isn't just something you can pull up really easy. But anyway, I, I, 
Yeah, I've asked for assistance that we don't have a standard form that we use at the town because we don't do this often enough. And they have said that they don't have a standard form to provide us with. Can you verify that we can be reimbursed for the attorney's costs? I've asked LCPC who's handling the grant administration if that's and the case. Said, and they've said we'll that it can be. Reimbursed. be. <laughs> okay, so we have the form. We have the surety agreement, and is there anything else? Uh, the third one is an eventual eventual requirement that once all forms are submitted, are ready for submission for uh, disbursement, for the, the, the funds to be dispersed from the state, the town's attorney will have to review all the forms. Uh, that's a requirement of, of the grant. Um, a number of those forms are not ready. Yeah, that we haven't received copies of them from LCPC or Jenna's Promise, uh, but that's coming up. So if we want to, if you so desired, you could make the process a little bit smoother by saying that we would have that permission when it's ready to send it on to the town's attorney, or you can wait until it's ready and then grant permission at that time. Gotcha. Okay, so now we have the subgrant form, we have the surety, surety, and we have a um, review of forms upcoming review by the uh, lawyers, which are potential actions. Potential, right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to motion to authorize the chair to sign the BCBT subgrant on behalf of the select board. Yep. Yep. Okay. okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? You peaceful with doing that? Yep. Okay. All yes. those. In... Yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um. Now we have surety and review of forms. Uh, what do you mean on the surety? Approval to. To engage with the town attorney. The attorney. Uh, do you even need approval for that? Is it going to be over a thousand dollars? It hasn't been, but the okay, um, the, the practice of the board has yeah. been to approve all uses of the time Yeah, good point. Um, motion to authorize attorney to review uh, the assurity paperwork to create a surety draft. Yeah. Sure. So the term matters because if we they draft draft. Yeah. Okay. Did you get that on? Well, to authorize the attorney to draft it, sir. And the one who described the surety meeting between the town and Jenna's promise. Between Jenna's promise and the town. <laughs> okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Is it Jenna's promise or generate Tetra L three C? Greg? Yeah. Generate Tetra L3C. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of them. Yeah, I'll pitch Jenna Tetra L3C. Generate Tetra L3C. L3C. Yeah, okay. It's the L3C. It's on our it's on our packet page eight, Donna, and it's generate Tetra L3C. Is who the who the agreement's going to be drafted between the town and that? Exactly. Is that is friendly that amendment, Evan? Supposed to be That's LLC. All right. Is that supposed to be LLC, not L three C? Oh boy. Yeah. LLC. I, I, I'm guessing it should be LLC, Limited Liability Corporation. Three C because it's a low profit uh, liability corporation. Thank you, Amy. No, so it is L3C. Okay, friendly amendment, friendly amendment, Evan? And friendly amendment agreed to, Duncan? Yes. Okay. Any other, any further discussion? Good catch, Mark. Can, can I just bring up one thing that I, I'm not sure if it's an issue or not. It's on page two of the agreement under terms of subgrant. It reads, uh, this subgrant is in the amount of $500,000, 
That doesn't make sense. Oh, yeah, dollars needs to be retracted. So um, it should be five hundred thousand dollars, correct? Yeah, that does So strike the word dollars. Strike the first thousand dollars. So I could, if we're open to a friendly amendment, I could strike it in my signing and initial it, and we could ask Don to initial it too. So I think Don will be the other signer. She was. I guess. We need a new motion or just amend We can amend it. We still have a live motion. We can amend it. Would you? Alan's already passed. Oh, that one's already passed. Yeah. One's already passed. Yeah. Then I make a motion to authorize that change. Second. Oh, wait, hold on one second. Yeah. We already have a motion on the floor. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> so let's hold that thought, Eric, and we'll let you do it in a second. So we have a motion about the surety. And that is to have the attorney draft. To have the attorney draft. Is there any further discussion about the surety draft? Okay. Can you read the motion? Uh, uh, to authorize the attorney, the attorney to draft the surety agreement between January Taker of three C and the town. Okay. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Mark. Hi. Okay. Okay. Now, flipping gears back to the uh, subgrant, the VCDP subgrant. Yeah, I make a motion that uh, the the first dollars be struck from that paragraph under uh, item five, terms okay. of subgrant five A. Yeah. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Can in, in anticipation of the possibility of other errors, could we authorize, or would you be amenable, Eric, to authorize Beth to make any other corrections which may be found? They do not change the intent of the motion, yes. Which, which did not change the intent of the agreement? Right. Okay. So we have an amendment. Then I would second that. Don, are you good? Okay. Any discussion? Can I just make a uh, commentary? The uh, the Barrows House was a very very tired building uh, before Greg purchased it. It was major leaks upstairs. The water was being collected in pails. Uh, and now you look at it and it's a really, really beautiful building. They've done a fabulous job of fixing it up. And I believe Greg said it was in the excess of a million dollars. It's been invested in it. And, uh, you know, I think this has become a real asset for the town and it was a, it's a good move and good thing that happened. That's all I want to say. Okay, thanks, Eric. I agree. It looks beautiful. Um, okay, so we have a motion on the floor. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Okay, lastly, was do we want to do, act on the lawyer reviewing other forms? Go ahead, Evan. I don't think so at this point. You're not interested at this point. Okay. I think there is some urgency to... I, I don't think this should wait, especially when we don't know exactly when our next meeting is going to be. So I would be willing to make a motion to authorize this attorney to review and execute or review and sign off on any documents that need to be submitted to BCDP. I I think there is urgency and I think we should do it. Are you moving? I am moving. Do you think that's gonna happen in less than a week? Well we have a motion. Do we have a second? Yeah I would second that. Okay now discussion. I think that's gonna uh, be less than two weeks. I I would hope that hold on one second Eric. Good. Okay Eric I was just going to say it may not happen in less than two weeks. However, if it's something that's required anyways, what 
what option do we really have? Might as well just vote it now and be move on. Fair enough. I agree. It's okay. It's going to happen sooner or later if it's needed. That's why we have a motion. So let's see how everyone stands. <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. All right. Aye. Why not? Okay. We have eyes all around. It's pretty close. But... Okay. Anything else for the grant documents? <clears throat> no, I don't have anything else. Okay. Um, just circling back on your comment, Charlie. Um, it just the policy says very specifically that the town will advertise for applicants on Front Porch Forum, the town website, and when appropriate, the News and Citizen. So I think there's some flexibility there. Um, and then all notices will always be used for the groups with statutory authority, for example, the Planning Commission or the Library Board. All three notices. So that's your point. Your point is that all three notices apply to the Planning, Board, Planning Commission. Fair enough. Okay. So I think we probably need to fix it if we haven't done that. The vacancy has been up for a while. Uh, I can check if we posted to the News and Citizen when it was new or if we could just run the new ad for it. Uh, let's I check and see. I don't see any harm in yeah. the new ad. Uh, no. News and Citizen isn't that expensive. But I don't think you okay with that? Okay, let's do it. All right. Okay. Thanks, Charlie. Uh, okay, follow up from previous meetings. Review the options for the light induct industrial park study. All right. So, chiefly here, we have a response <laughs> from uh, Mumley. Tyler Mumley, Mumley Engineering, uh, and Ruggiano Engineering. Sam Ruggiano has retired and sold the business to Tyler Mumbley. Um, the board was interested in what would it take to have a current uh, engineering plan done on the property, uh, believing that that would probably make us more competitive for uh, construction grants. Um, so I put out a, an inquiry with someone who was generally familiar and we, we got a response here. Um, it is quite a bit more expensive than I was anticipating, uh, coming in at $32,500. Plus $12,000 for the survey. Yeah. No. That seems aggressive, doesn't it? No. He said that he had estimated $12,000 for down the survey. Is that included in the thirty yeah. thousand? Yeah. Oh, oh, so also boundary surveying equals twelve thousand. Um, on, I don't believe it's included in the thirty-two five pocket page eighteen. Uh, if you take a look at page nineteen, uh, he gets into kind of a summary description. He says we estimate the cost of the. Above services to be 32500 for site plan re revisions, updated design and calculations, and permit application preparations and, and submittals, and an additional estimated $12,000 for a boundary survey. Which is in his 32. I, I don't know. I did. It's higher than 32. If you were at the 12, it's Man, will I have a heart attack right now or what? Yes. 5000 Plus four thousand five hundred plus seven thousand five hundred plus two thousand five hundred plus eight plus two plus five hundred plus twenty five hundred comes up to thirty two five. Which, my point, regardless, it's an incredible amount of money. My point is that is estimated is for thirty two thousand five hundred, and that includes site plan, update design, permit application submittals, and an additional estimated twelve thousand. Dollars for boundary design surveying. It's basically saying we carry twelve thousand because he's assuming that's what it is. So bottom yeah. line, like ultimately, we can argue about what the fees are, but like, is there an arc? Is there a like? What are the thoughts on this? 
Is it something we would be interested in considering moving forward? Is it something we are like flat out no? Like what are the what are folks' thoughts when they see this? Honestly, I think that the town might need to rethink you know what they want out of that piece of land and then ultimately should go to the taxpayers. Unfortunately, they don't all show up at town meeting day. Uh, but $32,000 to revise plans that we've already paid for when we don't have enough money to get the project off the ground and there's empty commercial space already in the county seems like a lot of money. And this is just to revise plans. This is not moving a single pebble of dirt. It's not moving, yep. Um, Mark, what are your thoughts? Um, I, I'm in the same vein of before we do this, I'd like to know what we think what's this going to do for us is this going to provide us a plan for structures or look infrastructure or i mean it just seems it's just civil engineering so we get you to the point of an active cooking application right it gets us there um eric do you have thoughts yeah i, I guess that is a little bit of a sticker shock i certainly wasn't anticipating a cost like that makes me wonder why maybe not keeping the one we have the study we had done and going forward with that and if if act 250 tells us we need more information they could tell us we need that no matter what we've done so um i would continue going forward with what we got and and not get a, another study done okay duncan <clears throat> I don't think this is another new study. I think this is updating the existing study or the existing civil engineering, which let's be clear, was not a complete set of drawings ready to submit to Act 250. I, I fully appreciate and understand the sticker shock of 325. In my mind, it's more a question of, do we stick with this engineering firm or do we put out an RFP for engineering services and see if there's more competitive um, figures? That, at, at the end of the day, if any, the advantage of going with Mumley is they were the ones that did the original work, the original engineering study, and therefore in theory, maybe they could save some money on the total study, but maybe there's some hungry engineering firms out there. I have a feeling right now that's not the case, but um, so uh, while, I, while I understand the, the sticker shock, I think there is real value to getting a plan that can be submitted to Act 250 um, and answer some of the questions. It's also important to note in here that he's estimating $25,000 worth of mitigation fees to mitigate prime ag soils on the property, as well as the fact that we would need to commit to setting aside forest land for um, forest mitigation. Um, my feeling on this is that we should actually really know what we wanna do with that land and determine whether or not we wanna move forward with a light industrial park. And regardless of that, I think there are pieces of this, even if it means we go through permitting more than once, there are pieces of this that if we're gonna turn the land over to do something with, whether we do something with it or somebody else does, uh, like what are the most important infrastructure pieces of all of that? Um, and I would just question, are all of these things the most important piece? I don't know if that's the case. It probably depends on who's gonna use it, how they're gonna use it, if they're gonna use it, right? Like, how are we gonna use this land? Are we really looking at a light industrial park? Are we looking at something else? Uh, if we're looking at something else, then how do we know we're building the right infrastructure for that something else? My question is still like bigger and what is our vision here? Cause I'm not sure we even know. And why would we spend this amount of money on something if we don't have a clear vision? My thoughts. Uh, Charlie? My question and concern is you bought the property 
Did you not get a survey at that time? Why are we even considering getting another survey now unless we did have one originally? It was a survey of all the ones. After it's divided out, which promise a lot of that there. So if they do that, we'll have to worry on the boundary to set hands on the original boundary to make a lot of lines. See what I'm saying? So if it's an acre, you're going to carve out that many lots of the acre. And that will take some time all over. Well, no. Seems like a lot. Uh, I think it's well, survey I, I agree with that. Yeah. There was a boundary survey, though. Yeah. Already. Oh, really? to break everything up. Yeah. And it takes time. It takes time to get out. Do I have all the calls? I'm going through it. There it goes. Taking statement. Taking no way. But uh, I agree with that. Uh, your market's going to be housing. Not like industrial ones now. And the need is housing. And I believe there's money for housing. And, you know, you could do a, a, a hybrid, you know, some, some industrial and some housing, and they do that all the time. And I, I think you're right. I think it's, I think you need to figure out. It depends that you want to hold it forever or you want to get your money back. Right? If you're going to hold it for a long time, then the industrial part is the way you want to go. If you want to move it and get your money back, then housing is an off ticket. Right? So I think you're right. I think it's, you got to go back to the drawing board and, and maybe you might be better. You might be better to spend a little money with a land fund. Rather than a civil engineer, they'll come in with some different ideas. They can do a lot of it right off of GIS maps. And, uh, you know, and then you could actually come up with a budget on what you could get out of it. So, I, you know, well, I don't know they all go right now, but I, I agree with that. I, I, being new to the board, I don't. I, I've never set eyes on the original work that Mumley did. So I don't know. You know. I feel like I'm out here guessing. You're naked again? <laughs> you, gotta get, you gotta fix that. You gotta get the clothes <laughs> on there, don't you? Ah, it's winter. Pretty cool. Uh, can we get the plan redistributed yeah. to everyone? Might as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just email it out so I can get. Uh, yeah, uh, circulate the, the market yeah. studies to it. Just send a link to the website. I think it's on the website, isn't it? Uh, it has been. I don't know if it's currently up. It takes up a yeah, lot so of space. That, that would be helpful for me yeah. because I, I'm with you about that. You know, I think we need to reevaluate re light industrial. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of what I said to start. Oh my gosh, that's like my ideas. <laughs> <You're> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I so I hope that one of the original plans had a housing component in it. Um, you know, to, to Greg's point, it might be worth considering a hybrid model, and maybe there's better. You know, maybe there's a better way to get to that point. Sure. I was oh, Beth. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I just not to uh, ask for more meetings, but you know, I, I hate to say it, but a dedicated <laughs> meeting <laughs> on the Jewett property. Um, I'm the only board member who was there when we purchased that land. And I know the, the thought process that was behind it when we went to the voters was we wanted to grow the grand list. You know, obviously you grow the grand list, the burden for every taxpayer goes down because you have more people in the pool paying for everything. Uh, you know, if anything, maybe you could make the argument that that, and also to provide jobs that this is needed more now than it even was back then with the, the loss of Manchester lumber and Parker and Stearns. There were a couple of fairly good sized employers in the community. Um, the structures, the physical structures are still there. They're still paying taxes, but you know, how long are they gonna pay taxes on buildings that are not fully being utilized? And I, I do uh, recognize that Jenna's promise has taken over Parker and Stearns and they are doing a quite a bit of things, but Manchester Lumber has limited uh, activity happening. 
So, the, you know, this is probably a dedicated meeting to, to really look at what we would like to do with the town property and, and what asset it could be. Yeah. We got an option. You just told me it was breaking up when he said he wanted another meeting. <laughs> I agree with Eric, though. Well. Um, I think, honestly, I think so too. I also think we have some deadlines coming up that are really pushing us toward we need to we need to get budget like budget matters uh first i think and we also have the atv meeting coming up so and we have thanksgiving coming up and 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 right like the list just keeps coming so i would propose that um let's get through our december meeting let's put on our december i told i did say we we're only having budget in december I still am sticking with that, other than determining what we want for a date for following up on the Light Industrial Park. Um, not talking about it, just put a date out there. Uh, but I think we need to really focus our energy on budget first. Greg? Uh, oh, I'm not speaking out of turn, but the planning commission, we did uh, print some prints off and we're going to kind of Google on in our next meeting a little bit. Whether it's good or bad or indifferent, I don't know, but mm -hmm. we're, we're gonna be pottering around with that. So you're thinking about uses for that plot? Yeah, I think so. Just kind of, you know, throw it maybe we'll have you know, the fall maybe we'll have some stuff for you to think about. That sounds really great. Yeah. Okay. You know, I hear about housing and housing is is great, but housing also uh, generates the need for more services um, and those services cost money. Um, whereas ag forest and commercial industrial land, it has the least impact on the need for additional services, which we pay for out of the municipal and school budgets. Hmm. So that's something we're thinking about. Um, and the other thing, you know, to Eric's point, I'm not convinced that five years from now, NBU is going to be there. Um, and that could be another huge um, loss to the community for a tax base and, a, um, you know, all kinds of, all kinds of reasons. So, you know, I think if we, I think we need to take a long-term look. So hopefully we can talk about those things when we have that meeting. Okay. Um, so we're agreeing, I think that every, paying for everybody that we're agreeing on not moving forward with the engineering study at this point and that we need to have a resetting. Um, what are your thoughts on Greg's point about the planning commission? I like the idea of having them noodle around with ideas. I think that's a great. That's what they should be doing. Perfect. I agree. So maybe we put a pin in it and wait to hear back on what their ideas were. And maybe you can have a good chunk of time in our in one of our upcoming meetings to present what you know the different ideas that are out there. Yeah. And you guys have copy of the marketing studies and everything that have been done. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, fun plan because I printed them off of my shop. Maybe. So we're going to. Okay. I said recently where it didn't include the marketing study. I've... I think we should stop the conversation because we can keep going and we have a lot still ahead of us. If there are things you think of that should be sent to the Planning Commission, will you just email Brian and myself? Brian, if there are other things out there, let's just make sure the Planning Commission has everything. And also to the point earlier, it's still valuable, I think, to share what the plan was um, before with everyone on the select board so they can take a look to or refresher or whatever. Um, so let's do some paper digging and making sure that all the right people get, get it. Okay. Um, sorry, I just want to make sure that I got responses to this. Everyone agrees that we're not going to move forward with the engineering study. Yeah. Yeah. 
You don't need a uh, motion or anything. Nope. nope. Just consensus. You're good too, Eric. Duncan? Yes. Yes. Yeah. With reservation. Okay. Fair enough. <clears throat> Uh, next up is discussing opportunities for ARPA funds. All right. So continuing our discussion yeah. on the use of ARPA funds. That's all. Say again. Nothing. Go ahead. All right. So uh, you've got a few additional handouts here. Um, first one is our uh, the board's priority list. Always a good thing to keep in mind when we're discussing big money items. Then I also uh, included this graphic from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, which I thought was kind of a good way of framing our discussion and remembering what we're trying to go for of uh, the intersection of uh, good governance, the greatest use of leverage, uh, and investing in long-term projects you know that's our, our ultimate goal for how to best use the ARPA funds uh, I cleaned up and removed uh, some of the issues that we had concerns with with the uh, with with the headings that we had uh, and the votes that we had for the use of ARPA funds so pages 22 and 23 is continuation of the same headings. And then we have the new headings on pages 24 and 25. So those first three um, have a lot more votes on them in general than the, than the rest of them. And the first three are recreation, trail parks, pedestrians as one, General economic development is two and industrial park development is three. Yeah. And I also provided for Are you. you the, um, page 22. Hour? Um, okay. So it's right behind that, yeah. Uh, there are also questions about what are other towns doing with the funds? Uh, and there was a uh, some questions asked back in April. And these are the responses were collated recently, and uh, I was pointed to this survey and the results. So I provided those for you also. That begins on packet page 26. I would like to. Which is like ridiculously small font that probably people That's can a lot read. of information, and it's really helpful. Uh, I'm trying. I mean, do we want to go over some of these again? We have 15 minutes. Yep. Uh, I tell you, I read it. Go ahead. Go ahead. I do believe in our survey, I thought that the board had not expressed much interest in making two $300,000 grants for restaurants. I agree. I agree. So yep. can we remove that, Brian? That will be under general economic development, last piece on back of page 23. Okay. So if possible, use money to attract food, good food eateries to town. Not that that's a bad idea, but use our funds. Yep, I can strike that. Um, what about we had also said the community pool and dog park were not the high priorities? Um, I believe that. From what I remember of that discussion, the community pool, nobody was in favor of but for ARPA funds, but um, there wanted to be a discussion about possibly using it to create a dog park. Uh, I'm fine with removing both of them as far as ARPA funds go, uh, but what are your thoughts on that, Mark? I'm a dog guy, so, but, some but you around. know what? That's not ARPA money either. That I don't think, right. you know. I don't think that needs to be our. So point. that where is that, Duncan? Sorry, it, it kind of compiles. Oh, community pool and dog park. Is there a general yep. consensus we could remove that from our funds discussion? Okay. Understanding that a dog park that has a want from different people. Um, the the last item, two below that is actually replicated. Mm -hmm. 
but we can get rid of one of those applications real quick, right? So a rope or a heavy wire fence, and then it says a rope or a heavy wire fence. So one of those can go for sure. We're kind of just trying to narrow it down. Underneath on packet page 23, well, it is great. Um, there is an item that's just listed as industrial park when there's a lot of other great ideas, but do we need an extra line to just say industrial park? It doesn't matter. It's just clear. You're just talking about cleaning up the notes. I'm really, to, all of them don't to need to be here. Focus. Yeah. Focus they can down. all just be a single, they can all just be the headers, really. Yeah. If we want to cut these out, um, I, I I think that the headers and the number of votes is more useful than the. So do we want them? Uh, I mean, we're trying to take community input here yeah. uh, and use it best for our performance. Are we at the point where we want to just discuss best areas in each of these categories? Or... Yeah, so the highest votes for the rec trails, bikes and pedestrians followed closely by economic general economic development. So for recreation, bikes, trails, and pedestrians, yeah, like that's the highest vote item. Um, and within those votes, even there are multiple multiple responses. I think, it, but we're we are starting to get narrowed down differently. What do you mean? A community pool and dog park, and the duplication on Beard Park, and I go from eight volts to six volts. But those really are all single well. ideas to support the park. The rec activities. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, so I guess are we getting rid of this and just focusing on categories? Like, do we want to just focus on rec as a category, economic development as a category, and industrial, late industrial parts, which is part of economic development as a category? Right. And then housing as a category. You really could combine those two. What two? Economic development and the industrial park. I think they're different things. I think they're different things because I think I think that's where we get in trouble. When we start talking about the late industrial park and we don't really have a vision for what it is, and then we start talking about generically economic development, those could be vastly different things. And I think when we start lumping them together, economic development could be um, seeding small businesses, like micro businesses, and helping them get a step up to scale, right? Light industrial park development is about a plot of land the town owns. That's different. I think it's about the property itself and what we do with the property itself and how we maximize that property. Maybe we shouldn't be calling it the late industrial park right now. Maybe we should be calling it the property, like, and how we're going to maximize property in the best interest of the town. I don't think they're one in the same. I think the intent of the way, I think the way, because we call it the industrial park, that sometimes people talk about it in terms of economic development. Uh, probably oftentimes they do, but like, that's a, you know, so you're, it matters. Are you saying that we should try to refer to it as the Jewel property? Yeah, I think we should refer to it as a parcel as opposed to a intent that we may not move forward with. Yes. These things are all over the place. So we don't have to do um, what do you guys think about that? I think how we talk about that piece of property is semantic. So I, I guess I'm fine with calling it the Jewett property until we have that meeting and hopefully uh, get some clarity on it. I'm wondering how we use this list best to guide us on what we do. Or again, like narrowing it down works best in my mind. But if we are just going strictly on votes, we could very easily just take the money and divide it up into categories. Let's ask the but question. I don't know if that's the best for the town. Because we already just talked about the light industrial park, geo property separately. We just talked about it in terms of planning commission. 
we take that one aside for a second. And then we talk about rec, trails, all things that go with that, and economic development. Do we feel like those are the two things we should be focusing our opera funds on? Some people refer to rec as economic development. I think I think, I think of it as economic development. I think, and I agree, Beth. I think the Jura property, let's hear from the Planning Commission. I think we need to, <clears throat> to kind of reevaluate that whole term. My only catch is I, I feel like we maybe we've asked the voters to buy it as a light industrial property. Now things more can change. And I agree with the change. But I'm just telling you, I, you know, there's, I bet that's what we sold it to the voters as, right? Is a light industrial park. It doesn't mean that doesn't mean I think there are better uses for it at this moment. Um, Fair enough. So I agree. Let's put that planning commission. Let's put that aside. Let's let's be creative about that use, and then focus on the first two. General economic development, which I think recreation is a part of. I think the rail trail is going to be <laughs> a player in economic development for the whole valley. So I think we have an opportunity to enhance Johnson's. The difficult thing that I'd like to add, and I'm supportive of REC, it is extremely easy to say that rec is economic development but nobody's ever been able to put a number to it actually they have yeah, for, uh, for specifically to the rail trailer to generalized recreation generally in communities that you could interpolate percentage-wise we should get this amount of money out of something but it does everything that you do in rec costs money, adds maintenance. We need to consider that this is supposed to move forward and pay off for the long term. And we are everything we spend on rec pays off, but we're kind of shooting in the dark there. I, I disagree. I think there's, you know, I mean, you go to the state, they're going to tell you. Rec brings this much money, like they can tell you how much breweries bring in and every other thing. Um, but that's, but I don't uh, think anything is going to have clear, concise numbers. It's, it's hard, but there's a lot less. I don't know. Uh, I said I support it. Okay, so, okay, yeah. numbers aside for a second, if we think about this in terms of if we think about rec and economic development in terms of our people, like who's the person, right? Who is each one of our residents? And we build a persona for our different residents. And we talk about like, think from their perspective, what does rec, trails, bikes, and pedestrian mean to the different people in our community? Because depending on who you pick, it's gonna mean a different thing. For some people, it's gonna mean hunting, or fishing. For some people, it's going to mean riding their bikes and work it, workouts and cardio and all of the sweaty, smelly stuff. <laughs> Not <one of> those <laughs> people. <laughs> For some people, it's going to mean team sports. For some many people, it's going to mean hiking, right? Or, it's going to mean, or snowmobiling, right? Like, like the list goes on and on. I think I think that as we think about these things, like how are we putting ourselves and basically we're personas too in our community. Like how are we applying the way we're thinking about developing these things to our constituents as people? So forget the money aspect of it for a second, just as for people. And if we can think about what our ideas are around that, then we can start thinking about, okay, how would we make this happen? And once we start thinking about, okay, now how are we gonna make this happen? Then we can start small, talking about like valuable pieces and how much those valuable pieces are going to cost. But I think until we get to the point of, you know, what does rec what does rec mean? What is high value for rec? Is it about creating a parking lot for the long trail? 
well, we already have a couple, like maybe we should be doing inventories of what these things mean. I think we also need to focus on the fact that we've got a limited amount of money here. And time. Uh, and time. Um, and there are no solid plans out there for any of these things. They're all amorphous, mm -hmm. basically. Um, with, I'm going to sound like I'm pushing for the industrial park, which probably to some degree I am because I've been involved in it so long. But um, that at least we have a piece of land. Um, you know, if if we decide that industri light industrial park is not the right use, so be it. Um, but my my thought is, we got the damn piece of land. We spent money for it. We ought to be doing something with it, one way or the other. Um, and a lot of these other things, we don't. You know, if we had a proposal out there right now for, we do creating X. What what do we have a proposal on that we could use this? We have the rec vision that Leia created years ago. That's really cool. There's a lot out there. Uh, I think it's on the website still. Maybe it's not. It was on the website you know, a couple of years ago anyway. But she had a big vision for what Old Mill Park looked like and what Railroad Street looked like and what the mills looked like. Um, so there is something out there with ideas around rec. And I know that Lisa has been also working on things around rack and trails and possibilities. So I think that we have people who've been putting some effort into this. You have a plan? Well, it depends Dollars on- Dollars associated? Uh, we don't have one for the industrial park either though. I mean, right, and I think there was an old plan it. with rough numbers that are outdated, I believe. We just, we just voted a few minutes ago not to, not to proceed to get those numbers. Right. So I'm talking about the rec plan. Right. I think the rec plan had some big numbers this year. Yeah. I would like to say that Duncan has said it and I've said it in the past. I agree with him. We yeah. need to consider the amount of money. It's very easy to say, forget about the money. Let's think what's important and shoot for targets. We don't have enough money to replace one bridge in this town. So we really need to think realistically to start with. Otherwise, a lot of time put into something that we don't have the funds for. My argument to that is that you are fixing your mindset right away and you're limiting the possibilities by constraining yourself right off the bat. And there's plenty of opportunity to constrain. That's easy. It's easy to constrain. It's hard to think about things outside of the box. We're working on constraining now. We had a larger list. Beth. Go ahead, Eric. Yeah, I just maybe wanted to try to circle everybody back to this ARPA funds. It's six hundred thousand plus dollars with no strings attached. This is a once in a lifetime money. I have never ever seen money like this come in. This is something that we should never use for something that would come out of our operating cost. We should not use this for something that there's funding sources from a different place. This is something that is really, uh, should be really thought long-term. What are the biggest changes that we can affect that would be good for our community that is no or limited funding from other sources? And, you know, I, I would go back to uh, the Jewett property again if this money could be used to pull down the millions more that do require some kind of a match that we didn't have, that was the promise that we went to the voters with that we would try to find other funding sources. Um, my, my trouble with the, I, I have supported a lot of different rec uh, endeavors over the years, but a lot of those funding sources come, can come from other places or some of them are within our operating budgets to support. Uh, so I'd want to think much bigger than just the rec is thinking something that'll be a long-term benefit will put money in our grand list and, and help the taxpayers of Johnson forever. And I think that's a direction we have to think about. It's the economic development direction. Thanks, Eric. We have a whole bunch of people, so I don't want to spend a ton of time on this because I want to keep with our agenda, but the order is Kyle, Greg, Jason, 
And if you could just take like not very long to say what you got to say, that would be great. Kyle? And it's a very, very robust plan that we hired outside consultants to create with the select board and village uh, trustees. And um, I would argue that back on the rec side, we have this rail trail that is coming right through our town with a captured audience, and that you know this plan specifically is built around that. That, that uh, tourism that's going to be coming through our town, like it or not, you know, and how to capture them and harness the the uh, that audience and sending possibilities and the revitalization that will bring into our downtown. So I would, um, and again, that's about land that we already own that we could reimagine with funds like this. So I would highly recommend. <laughs> Thank you. Greg? Yeah, I think what we should be doing is finding uh, where the grants to match. Because you could turn that 600000 into $6 million. Yep. See, that's that's what we need to search for. It's like, okay, what is, where's the money? Where, what is, what is the government? Where are they dumping it? And we take our 600 we could maybe do multiple projects. And that like I say, that turns into six billion. Those are the things we need to think about. I, in my opinion, that's what you want to your own board. But I, matching, matching grants for that money is going to go a long way. Thanks. Thanks. Greg, Jason? As a taxpayer, not the real one, I just want to specify. As a taxpayer, I do, I think that uh, it would be a the best thing to utilize to finish some of the projects, like Greg was saying, you get grants, but do some of the stuff that on all the committees list that they want to get done, and then use the rest for like a wish list thing. Because it is, like Eric said, you know, so you don't spend a lot of time on it. So try to do something with it that you would normally not have to take out of the budget to do it. Thank you. Yeah. Did any, I mean, I read through every what every other town did, and I was grossly underwhelmed. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. I was just uh, there was some, didn't do much for me either. It, it there was nothing. If you read through pages and pages, it, um, they are not doing transformative things, mm -hmm. you know. And I think I think that between Kyle and Greg and Jason and us and the planning commission, we're gonna we're gonna try and use this money. I like the idea of if it's possible to draw down more money, but that's where our economic development person that we hire is going to be helpful and Brian, because there's money out there. There's a ton of money for a little while out there. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I hope that you you all read through that list. It was pretty discouraging to me. I agree with you. The thing that I've heard, I guess, a couple of times, the way people are talking were, about like making connections. And I was thinking about it initially about the rail trail. Like, you know, what if we had a loop that came from the river road area of the rail trail over on route 50, you know, um, behind the Nazarene church. What if we had a loop that came and ended up coming off the rail trail? Maybe it's a little bit more challenging of a loop, loop that um, connected into village like, would we have enough property owners when we make that connection that actually looped travelers into our village because they're not, like, there's enough dif distance from the rail trail to the village that we're not getting the traffic. I think that we could, we do get a lot of traffic, but it is a bit of a distance. You have to go up railroad street to get to the village kind of a thing. Like, I'm just curious, like, what it could look like if we were to make connections. That got me thinking, like, okay, are there areas of our town that don't easily connect to other towns or other roads and is there an opportunity for a new road somewhere that would really open up travel like you know i don't know like i said just thinking like out of the box like what do we do every day where we just don't think about these other possibilities i'll go back to um 
when I was on that Main Street project, and I still find it strange that we there's no sidewalk connecting the, the mobile home park area of the town to the village. You know, I watch people walk on Route 15 every day, and I'm thinking, you know, because I, you know, at one time we. I won't go there. But anyways, there was that was on the list, a, a sidewalk, some sidewalks. The same thing with um, Katie went. Somebody was killed walking down from there in yeah. the last year. Yeah. The other thing I think is like, why isn't there a road? So you're talking about something much more kind than I am. <laughs> but mine is one of convenience. Like, why isn't there a road that goes from Sinclair Road area on Route 100 C over across to where the Hyde Park Johnson border meets. Battle Road? No, Battle Road, no, does, there's no road there. Like there's a lot of land there, Melody Lane area. Like why does oh. Melody Lane connect to Sinclair somehow? That would, that's a direct route to our high school. Like, you know, just, I don't know. Good point. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. I go back to my comment. There's a limited amount of money and we got a limited amount of time. Yeah. So, um, okay. there's a lot of interest in matching funds, and I fully support it. Uh, my only reservation on that was time, time frame. Um, would it be possible if the board supported it? Could you reach out to the LCT and LCPC and get a list of uh, economic development grants and rec grants that are out there? Potentially, we could use some money from our earmark um, economic development the voters approved for paying somebody to administer those grants, whether it be LCPC or independent. Um, is there interest on seeing what's there for grants? Of course. And so. using our budget to pay for administration there. Yeah, we want to know. Because the timeline's huge for the grant, right? You, you've done, right? We don't have very long to spend it in government years. Okay, so there's the ask, and maybe our legislators well, too. You guys would have to agree with that. I agree with it. I agree. With it. I agree. Yeah. And I, Eric, I would. I would I yeah. This is fine. I would say federal legislators. That's well, what I meant. What would, would VLCT? They would know the list of federal grants that are out there for economic development. It's probably right. a dictionary is worth of grants. So. It probably is. But. Yeah, yeah I, I had sent you a couple of websites uh, that I don't remember off the top of my head that there are there are lots and lots of grants. Um, having having some ideas about just recreation and economic development grants helps a little bit. I'll see what I can get from that, but it still might be the answer that I get when I ask about that might be that that's still very broad. Um, that's the case, just uh, if that's what they say at our next meeting, hopefully yep. it is December, um, but hopefully we can narrow down the topic. Maybe. Um, yeah, I, I also right. think you should be making contacts with um, Memorial Economic Development Corp, too, to see about Grand Toxic Economy. LEDC. LEDC. Another good point. Disagree, but one concrete proposal that we could do is no matter what we do with the Jewett property in the future, a road through it would be a part of almost any use. A road and infrastructure would be part of almost any use. That could be a concrete thing that we go to pursue. That certainly could be. We talked about that a little bit. I didn't mean That's to... a good topic at our discussion on the Jewett property. No. 
Okay. Um, starting to get thick in here again. I can already feel it. So let's move on to the next. Uh, lots to think about. I just need to make one note. Just checking. All right. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I want to do a walk to a village here at the town. Okay. Sorry. We're also ready to. Yep. Ready. Okay. <laughs> uh, next up is the uh, review and select property and casualty insurance options. Uh, I have print copies. It's not in your packet, but it's the uh, supplemental, and I sent it by email. Um, we received one proposal for property and casualty insurance from uh, Passive uh, and VLCT. Did you get the building schedule from that? Yes. Did I miss for that one? I, I didn't provide you with another copy of that. We had As, didn't they have the historic society building in there in their schedule for astronomical replacement costs? And while building materials are up, um, you know, if something were to happen to that, would the select board want to rebuild it with the additional space? Or it's not? probably value of the items in it is probably why it's so high. Yeah, that's that's part of the reason I suggested taking a close look at that. Because there may well be, you know, they're basically looking at replacement costs, right. and it might well be that we wouldn't want to replace that building in the form that it currently exists, and that I, might be the case of other buildings. I know this sounds like not the right coverage, what I'm about to say, I realize what I'm saying, but it is. If we're covering all the materials in the historical society as part of our valuation we shouldn't we should have an inland marine inland it's called inland marine policy coverage and it's for all the stuff which is separate from the building and that, that is covered separately uh it depends on the insurance it depends on how insurance rights but the insurance is written and what the underwriting process is but it's either a coverage item underneath your policy which is separate from your buildings or it's um, you can write separate inland marine policies. With with passive, there's the building and then there's contents. It within that, okay. Uh, but even so, that shouldn't be part of the like you're not gonna we're not gonna replace it. We just want that payout, not that replacement. To Evan's point. Well, in case of the historical society, most of that stuff is irreplaceable. That's what I mean. Like, there's no point in. But we it. did. Uh, we we had a. For insurance purposes, we had who was the auctioneer that came and did the assessment of the value. Yeah, I mean, so we basically have done yeah. a pretty comprehensive evaluation. But still, yeah. to Evan's point, that's not part of the building, the rebuild. I was just wondering if we knew what I mean. Possibly the library needs to hire. I don't know what the building schedule is, but um, is our deductible? Did Rosemary say it was five hundred dollars? While back, I don't think so. It's been a, a thousand. Or let's see if it's the uh, It's on page two, which is not actually the second page. Uh, the top of the page it says. Uh, one thousand per occurrence for property. Brian, what's the drop dead uh, timeline for accepting this proposal? Before, sorry, before I move on, where is it? Where is the the deductible? Uh, the top of page. Two. What does page two mean? Thousand dollars per occurrence. 
Mark can find it. You should be able to find it. <laughs> right. <laughs> See, you know. Oh, so for auto liability, the thousand for I guess law enforcement and fire. Oh, oh it's in the header. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. I see. Hello. Okay, I see. Sorry. That's okay. Interesting that they cover more. Okay, what was your question again, Duncan? Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. What's what's our drop dead timeline for an accepting proposal? <laughs> December 30th? I imagine it's December 30th. Mm -hmm. I, they didn't provide me with a, a drop dead late. I, I emailed this to you as soon as I got it, so I, I not had a lot of time with this document. This is your bailiwick, right, Beth? I mean, no, not really. Do we? I do, do work. Are all stuff. these things um rebuild to code? To, I mean, that's a that's something that I that I I have on my buildings. They burn down. They're not going to let me rebuild them the way they are. They're going to have to be right. sprinkled or you know. <laughs> And I assume our policy does all that and it covers loss of use. Say, say the town garage burns down and they need to rent, rent a place. It so, does cover loss of use. I don't. I don't see it here. But um, I don't know. Different buildings have slightly different valuations and what their replacement would be. And I. I don't know what they all are off the top of my head. What happened with the duck and when the fire station burned down? I mean, we had what? Well, it must have had to rent fire trucks and stuff. Uh, we were pretty lucky in as much as we got a lot of um, contributions of other fire departments. Mm -hmm. um, some, you know, um, uh, one town actually gave us a pumper. Upper, uh, okay, I just I just wondering because envision the town garage burning down. Th that that was a good example. That building was like totally out of code. The new building that got built was totally code compliant. Um, it was you know it was a right. point two five million dollar construction project. It was built all, bigger, all covered by insurance. All covered by insurance. All covered by insurance. And and so loss of use is. Was is part of this policy, as far as you know? As far as I understand, it doesn't go, say that in the summary page. Trucks and graders and stuff next week. On page one, it says buildings, contents, property in the open. Not sure what that means. And equipment breakdown at all locations. I would think under the property, if it include included loss from uh, loss of use, that would be listed, but it it isn't. Well, that's done. <laughs> That'd be super Duncan. Cool. Duncan can probably, yeah, I was just going to say, Duncan can probably speak to this better than I, but as I recall, they worked with the village and in making improvements to what the fire department had previously. They didn't just build back what they had. They actually, uh, and not just bringing up the code, but bringing, having improvements to their uh, whole facility. Yes. This? Yeah, Walter might remember, but I think the village paid an additional hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, we had to carry a loan for about five years. Yeah, hundred hundred twenty-five thousand. Where are we get the hit? Yeah, that's the problem. And because ultimately, replacing the value of the truck that we had is less than a lot, and that's where we. All the donations, right? But the Fulton of the had to be part you know, leave and replace all the trucks to get that full battery. That really was a big hit. And they they gave us net book value of trucks. We got one of the grants because of the water rescue and the other things that were in this month for building some of those buildings are. Is it just split up over two fiscal years for us? Um, 
It's in, it's in probably in multiple different places in the budget. Yeah. Uh, in, in general insurance gets us the close. Be line one sixty one in the budget. Well, we budgeted forty seven thousand. And this is coming in at fifty one four. Right, but I'm wondering this would span two business. General insurance of under select board expense. Would that be the Most of it would be under there. Some of it does get spread out. This says passive. Yeah. The majority of it's probably under that one. It is. That that's the literal property and casualty. Uh, unemployment insurance. Some other things get costed out, but we can put small numbers by comparison, but yeah. I fall. Are you comfortable with accepting this tonight, Duncan? Or are you asking about a drop dead date because you have a question? I'm I'm kind of suggesting that your idea of looking at the um the schedule, the building schedule and because under um, the way the passive program also works is you have an option of either selecting replacement value, um, agreed upon value. Uh, there's there's four or five. Do you remember Brian off the top of your head? What the, so we could we could agree like to use the historical society building that the replacement cost might be X, but we would agree to accept a value of Y. Um, gotcha. Which which might be different, which would lower the. And are you able to do that per building? Yes, yes, yes. They they should be able to provide a building schedule, um, and on that there would be a check mark based on whether it's agreed upon value or replacement cost value or whatever, and then what the value is, and you know, I mean, that's the schedule that I think would be worth taking a good hard look at. You know, it's not going to save us tens of thousands of dollars. Right. My only concern with that is we will be pushing it into a December meeting. I would like to see it. Let's do it the second. Well. December meetings are in our budgets. Usually, I'm riveting crowd for those too. Packages. Yeah, Lois yeah. and Walter. <laughs> Lois usually knows it better than that. I should ask you where this is broken down, Lois. Okay. Uh, so, what are you thinking? What do you want to do? Not knowing the job dead date. Uh, do we want to make an Do we want to make something around that assumption on the valuation of the buildings? Yeah. Okay. No, I wanted to make it on the assumption of the job dead date. Okay. But if you look at the total, you know, if you look at the total bill for the property, you know, it's twelve thousand seven hundred dollars. Right, and that's the only thing that would be affected. It's the only it's thing that you, so yeah. So it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be huge money that you're, you yeah. know, you might save five hundred thousand bucks by looking at that. I, I I did review it on your request, and there was not anything on there that stood out as. I would. Sorry. I, that, that stood out as obviously problematic. I mean, we could, for the historical society, to your point, we might not want to rebuild that the way it is, so we could adjust that a bit. It's not going to save a huge money. No. Okay, so what do we want to do? What would your recommendation be, Brian? We've had good service with Passive before, and they were the only ones that submitted a response. Um, I can take a look at properties and I'm sure that they would give us some time to make adjustments uh, if so desired, but we can, I think we can pretty safely accept their I would vote to accept their Okay, we have a motion. Second we have a second? Any discussion? I would like to look at this more next year. That's a pretty big assumption you're making right now. 
Flame <laughs> duck. Uh, okay. Uh, any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Actually, it was thinking the same. I think it's pretty good, actually. Uh, okay. Thank you for putting that together. Uh, this is actually a really useful packet for us. I'm going to put right into here. Okay. Next up is the heating oil. Um, one more thing about this. There were a few questions that I couldn't answer about coverage. If you're really interested, I can provide you with our complete coverage documentation. Yeah, why don't you send it okay. so that folks have it? I want to commit it to memory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, quiz mark next week. <laughs> um, all right. So send um, it to Beth. I don't want Mark to be naked anymore. I'm over yeah. it. <laughs> I don't want to. I'm trying to bring it here. So uh, spoke again with Fred's and Brasso. Um, the rack price for Brasso is the 30 cents over rack, which is the same as uh, what Fred's is offering. Um, you know, Fred's is also offering a significant amount at a pre-purchase price that is significantly less than what we can purchase from either company right now. Did you, did, did you call like right now? I mean, the price of fuel oil that I bought two weeks ago was <laughs> five cents higher than what I bought today per gallon. Pretty amazing. We're from 564 to 495. So, I pretty amazing. Which is still less than 422.9. Which is Which still more than that. Right, yes. No, still more. But what I'm telling you is it's this. Price fuel is going down. Not the, the predictions don't have it shooting up. But that's, yeah, I mean, that, that's a risk with. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, at the risk of going to move this along, I'm going to make a motion. Ooh, love it. Oh. Go. My motion is going to be to reject the bid from from Fred on the basis that we a only received one bid, um, and I think that alone is enough, in my own opinion, to, to do that. But that's that's part of my motion that we reject all the bids. The second part of my motion would be that we um, negotiate with Fred a uh, price based on a fixed over rack price minus any penalties um, and extending our time frame from a ending in on May 31st to ending on June 31st, uh, June 30th, um, which would give us an opportunity if we felt the need to go back out for an RFP. My guess is the main, okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Confused to rejecting their offer, but then wanting to go with the big six over rack rate offer that they had. Yeah, my reasoning for that, Evan, is um, reading the RFP that we circulated. Um, I'm very uncomfortable with the numbers that were used in RFP. R RFP. I'm also very uncomfortable with paying a penalty um, for an over the rack price. Um, so. That's why, and, and you know, candidly, I think we played fast and loose with the RFB process at our joint meeting. I, I, I don't think we did that. I don't think we handled that well. Um, so to me, this is a way of trying to salvage the RFB process uh, with a straight face yet give Fred the contract because he was the only responsible better. Um, who provided something in writing. 
and sets his over the rack price is the same as Brasso's. Okay, yeah. just, just to repeat, we're talking about a fixed rack, rack price, negotiating with Fred's on a fixed rack price without the fees that are listed in the bottom half without of the penalty fees, yeah. the, without the penalty fees and revising the contract termination date to June 30th. Correct. Eric? Uh, that's just what I was gonna ask for is a repeat of exactly what the motion was because there was a lot of explanation added to it. And I just wanted to hear what the exact motion was. And I'm willing to second it now hearing it. Okay, now we have a second for So further discussion, go ahead, Mark. Um, this is has nothing to do with propane. This is just our oil. This is oil. diesel and heating oil. Diesel and heating. Yeah, I'm, I'm peaceful with that motion. Okay. Any other discussion? I've got a, a little comment. Um, the amount of fuel oil that we used, not including the diesel tank, uh, in 2021 and 2022 was uh, 16,433. So it was significantly more than the, what they're offering for uh, of Express. You confused me. Meaning we wouldn't be, you're saying that we wouldn't be charged a fee because our usage was higher than what our, our RFP noted. Correct. I don't think that makes us look good, but um, because you actually have a diesel, if I did you two, I took your figures and came up with two year averages, 16,000 of diesel and 17,000 of number two. So my, my proposal would be number two in diesel um, at a fixed rack, a fixed 30 cents over the rack price. Which comes to somewhere around thirty-three thousand gallons if you add the two together. Yeah, but if you're doing my rationale is if you're doing you know if they're doing a fixed fee over rack price, it really reduces their need or incentive for a penalty. Right, which right. is why I'm suggesting that we eliminate the penalty clause. I, I think we get rid of that too. Then. And, and with that you said with rack, they're we're riding the market. And you were talking about negotiating rack price because our usage is actually so much higher that we in theory they would still be making good money at a reduced rack price. Yeah. And you know, the way our the way the re request for proposal is written, it allows the town and village to request additional information or clarification. Mm -hmm. but it doesn't allow us to yeah. renegotiate basic items such as you're comfortable with should it seems to me so. if we go with what you're talking about because the negotiation yeah. is should it be 25 cents or 20 cents or 30 cents over the rack that's where the negotiation is at that point <laughs> if we show up and say we want 33,000 gallons of fuel Maybe they'll give us 25 cents over there. I'm, I'm, so I'm open to the concept of getting it for last. But. I, I don't know, but that seems to me where you negotiate now is 30 cents over there. Okay. Um, and tell them we want 33,000, you know. So we have a, we've been average. we have a, a motion on the floor. We're talking about negotiating. The thing that I was just whispering to Evan is that I actually feel like anytime we're talking about our negotiating terms, we should be in executive session. But we pretty much had the discussion, so there's no point. Right. Um, that being said, we already have a motion. I assume you were implying that Brian wouldn't be the negotiator in this case. Just want to clarify that. Uh. In your motion, uh, that that he that, would be, um, yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay, um, are we ready to vote? Was there Everyone a second? understands. Yeah, yeah Eric seconded. 
That's how long it's been. <laughs> it's been a while. So are we ready to vote or do we have more discussion? Let's do the motion again. Well, yeah, I, would, I would sort of have a question about the motion because I think you specifically said in your motion. Hold on, Donna. Eric, can you hear Donna? Yes, yes, I can. Okay. Yeah, you specifically said in your, well, you didn't say 30 cents or where You didn't say 30. I was paying attention to that specifically. You didn't say okay. 30, you just said rack, rack price. Over the rack price. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, so I guess the motion is to negotiate with Fred to reject all the bids or reject the one bid that you got and negotiate with Fred's a price, uh, a fixed over rack price minus any penalties and changing the termination date of the contract from May 31st to June 30th. I'm glad you're reading that back because um, the thing I was going to say is I think that it's probably the 31st because it's probably the when all of their contracts end, considering it's end of their heating season. Um, do we feel that's like, are you firm in your June 30 date? Um, well, since this contract is for diesel fuel and heating oil, my thought was it would enable us to tailor it more with our fiscal year and to, if we decide to go down that road, to um, put out a new RFA. Yeah, I asked the question because if they're not willing to change that date because all of their contract ends, does that negate our ability to negotiate and you know settle on an agreement? Um, if that is a point of negotiation, I don't, I, I, to answer your question is it, it's not a hard and fast for me. It would be my preference in a negotiation. I, okay, I, I asked the question because I wonder if we should have an amendment to the motion in that case, if it's your preference as opposed to like firm on. June 30. How about adding preference before the drop dead date? For the preference of the drop, a drop. Uh, that works. Provision. That works for me. And to your and that, point, to your point, Beth, I know this isn't part of the motion and we've got to, I guess we're still at discussion part. If, if, if this is unsuccessful, we still have the option of continuing with Brasso at the current Yes. pricing arrangement and you know could simply go until the end of the heating season put out a new RFP. We could also do the same with friends, but yeah, it's true. Eric, were you gonna say something? No, I was just saying I considered that a friendly amendment if if that's what Duncan was gonna uh, consider it so. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> you good Donna? So the friendly amendment is is to say that the preference is for that provision maybe. Yes. Okay. Uh, and I think it's actually referenced to be a contract date. Termination of contract date. As opposed to <clears throat> drop dead date. Um, okay, so we have a motion. Are we ready to vote? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Okay. Um, surplus and reserve fund process. All right. So the next up, uh, I think I mostly got that, but I will take the <clears throat> extra notes. Um, let's see. The Reserve funds. I, I, There's another one I printed up an extra copy to make a change that was uh, sent in by Walter. Um, let's see. So this gives us an overview of most of the existing reserve funds. Uh, we're still locating 
we're still getting following up on a little bit more detail uh, for the language as it was passed for the digitization uh, reserve fund. And I believe that's the last one that's left. Um, If I can start someplace, uh, I want to talk about the message that we received from Walter. Walter had uh, said that the, the bridge and culvert reserve fund had been amended from the floor uh, to change a, a little bit of the wording. Um, I grabbed the minutes from that meeting and that's not indicated in the, the official minutes for that meeting, but I was not present. We do have a couple of a few people who were present at that time. So the minutes in the annual report for the year ending June 30th, 2010, uh, which would have been the 2011 town meeting, uh, in the, the minutes for this simply state that the town voted to authorize a bridge and culvert reserve fund for the major repair of town owned bridges and large culverts. That sentence is, is all that it has about the passage of the reserve fund. So Walter, did you have any, did you have minutes or anything from that meeting or just what you were about? You do? I would. Uh, if you could hand them to me, then I, I'm happy to make the change. Uh, yeah. So, Brian, in the sheet that you handed out and highlighted in yellow, there is the sentence or paragraph that begins amended on the floor. Yes. Where did that language come from? Uh, that was what Walter had sent it. Oh, okay. Which is right here in the minutes. I was the one to make the amendment, so I remember. <laughs> yeah, then, yeah, with, with these, uh, that provides a little bit more distinction, a little bit more detail than what uh, Lydia and I were able to find. Uh, so thank you, Walter. Uh, but this gives us an overview of, with that correction made, this gives us an overview of our existing reserve funds. Um, I would, with Rosemary not being here, I'm a little reluctant to go into great detail about our recommendations for the use of reserve funds, but I can if you so wish. Um, but we also have the open question about getting a more detailed opinion from the town's attorney about our process. So I'd look for a little bit of guidance from the board about what you're... With your regard to that, on. I would like to make a specific function to request a written legal opinion from the town's attorney. And I have five specific questions that I would like to see, uh, which would be part of my motion. And I think I sent that to everybody. For the record, I should probably read them. Yes, please. All right. Do you send them to Donna too? What's that? Did Donna get them? No, uh, but I can. I will. So I can certainly, I can certainly give it. So, question one would be Does a select board have the authority to reserve surplus annual budget funds for specific purposes? Question two If so, do those proposed reservations require the approval of voters? Question three If so, can that approval come as part of the approval of an annual budget provided the proposed reservations? are clearly identified and described in said budget. Question four, if not, what would be the recommendation for securing voter approval for proposed reservations and probably the one that's most on point to 
Um, Walter's concern is notwithstanding any specific wording approved by the voters when initially establishing a reserve fund, e.g. will be funded by annual contributions set forth on the town's annual budget <clears throat> as a line item, can the select board with voter approval transfer surplus funds into a reserve fund? That would be my motion to get those questions answered in the written form. No, I didn't hear that. Did you hear that, Eric? Yes, yes, I did. And I'm, I'm, willing, I'm willing to second the motion. Um, but I also would like to see the original meeting minutes as was approved by the select board after that 2010 meeting um you know I, I believe probably walter went in the vault and got it as well as uh we can go into the vault and and get that sent to us uh using the uh, town report the following year that's a very abbreviated meeting minutes and i wouldn't take that as the uh the whole meeting minutes of town meeting to, to see what the exact wording was and what the amendment from the floor was, I think we should have that from the official meeting minutes that we have in the vault. So that's what you want to be sent with, if, if Duncan's motion passes, that's the wording that you want sent with it. <laughs> it. It has to be, for the attorney to make an opinion to issue an opinion, he's going to have to see exactly what was approved from the floor. And it's not on a constituent to provide the official meeting minutes. That is on us. We should have that in front of us. Yes. So, Eric, would that be for the actual approved language for each and every? Reserve fund or? Well, you know, that, that's a good point because uh, I think our attorney is going to want to see that. How can he issue an opinion if he hasn't seen the official meeting minutes from that town meeting? So in, in essence, that could be supplemental information that was provided to the attorney. True. Yeah. In order to help him answer the questions. Yep. Do you have any questions, Brian? No, I'm just reading along. I'm supportive of it. Walter. I guess I'm hearing and not doing what Ultimately, what concerns me and interests me is voter intent. What did the citizens want in particular? And if you read that motion for the Capitol Reserve, it says a line item of budget. The people want to be able to see it. Taste it, touch it, yell at it, vote at it, kick it, amend it, approve it, not approve it. When I amended the future article, the voters approved it because they can. They wanted to be able to see it, touch it, feel it, kick it, yell it, amend it, accept it, vote it up or down. Ultimately, I'm all I'm asking of this board is do nothing now. And as part of the budget process, to say we have X amount of surplus. This is what we would like to do with it. This is why we would like to do what, what we want to do with it. What do you think? Voter intent. This is voters' money, citizens' money. They should have the final say. And where does that happen in the town? It happens at the annual meeting as part of the vote. Vote on the budget. And so, all I'm saying is the voters have consistently, with these articles, said 
we would like to have the opportunity to speak on these items. Okay. The original motions, amended motions, all those other little reserves is all unexpected funds. So it is the line item in the budget. The only one that's kind of a little, little loose is the capital education fund. Tradition has been the select board every year has come with their budget and said, this is what we want to put in the capital education fund. Ultimately, every year people have come forward and say, do you approve of this? That's all I'm asking this board to do, but somehow if you want to do stuff that's going to relate now outside of the purview of the town meeting. And all I'm asking you folks to do is forget the horses. This is between the select board and the town's folks. And you should be taking the attitude we've got this couple hundred thousand dollars. This is what we'd like to do. So we will prove that you did not approve. Last time we did this, and Eric will remember uh, the same issue that for the select board, what well, they did do, they put it in the budget. We are putting an extra amount into the capital reserve fund. Took it out of the surplus to offset that in the budget. The voters wrote it. The select board went to the town, folks, and said, This is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. And I even agreed with the select board's decision. So I said, Not only the town meeting, the capital reserve fund was short. It needed the money. It was a good decision, but ultimately the decision was made, the ultimate final decision was made by the council at the town meeting day, which it should be done because it was fair and final. So you can get all kinds of legal opinions, but really what matters is what do the voters decide? And that's who should make the final decision. And that happened as part of the budget process at Anglin. And that's what we should be doing, is doing nothing now. And as part of the budget, Side what we want to find how you present it to the council. So that's all I'm asking. Thanks. Ms. Walter? I think there's a fundamental misunderstanding. I, I, I think when we look at what the surplus is, the intent of the select board is to reserve. I, I agree with you 100%, Walter. If, if the select board does not choose to reserve, Funds which later get approved by the voters. I agree with you 100%. Then, if, if we don't make a proposal, then the money is the taxpayers, um, and it automatically by statute or you know, whatever uh, is goes to reduce taxes. Now, that that has been traditionally part of what the board has done is applied a portion of the surplus to reduce taxes, but they've also reserved a portion of those monies out for various other purposes, which then get put in the budget and voted. So I, I agree with you 100%. I, but then why are you discussing putting that money to reserve on now? Because that's uh, on the list. If you look at the top of the list, it says pro proposed reservations. Or surplus. But is this going to be part of the budget? Yes. Yeah, it'll be part yes. of the budgeting process. Yes. And so this Absolutely. is going to be presented to the task force every time of the meeting. Absolutely. Okay, that is not the case. Okay. Yep, well, that's the case. So, yeah, I think we're all on the same page, which is good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor. Well, if I might be prompted to vote against my own motion if, if, the, if the, the reason for doing that would be to get absolute clarity over the select board's authority. If Walter is is agreeing that the select board has the ability to deal with a surplus and to make a proposal for reserving it, which gets voted on by the voters, as Mark would say, I'm peaceful. And as Duncan would say, I have heartburn. <laughs> So are you withdrawing your motion? You don't have to vote against yourself. Either. Well, I, I really don't want to spend $1,000 on getting a legal opinion if there is not an issue. Um, you know, if, if, if what I'm hearing from Walter in what he's hearing back from us is that we're proposing 
reservations, which would then be put into the budget and voted on. That's always been my understanding of how things should be and what the past, past practice of the board has been. So it sounds like you are withdrawing. I, I withdraw my mouth. Okay. Since the whole budget sort of a proposal to get voted down. Eric, are you peaceful? Well, before I withdraw my second, I, I heard pieces of Walter. Uh, but I know he's brought this question up a couple of times before town meeting. Did he agree with the way we were doing it and presenting it to the voters? Is that what I heard or did I not hear that? As long as it is part of the budget that is presented to the town folks to full time, I am And the way we presented the budget in the past, you felt did that or did not? What I've been hearing, what I've been hearing and reading in the minutes was different and from what has been done in the past. <clears throat> and just to clarify, what you've been reading in the minutes is where um, so, uh, recommendations on where to put the money, and it and it's a firm like this is the decision and the way it's written and probably the way we're talking about it too. I can see how you could you could read the minutes and say the select board made the decision to put these funds in this reserve. I can see how you read that, but I think we need to be more careful on our intent and the way we talk about it. Because when we talk about it, we're not saying it's going in this fund. We're saying we're proposing that it goes in this fund as part of the budgeting process. Uh, exactly. Yeah. If that's that's where the misconception was, you know, I agree with what you just said exactly, Beth. Donna, are you catching up? You're following along too. Okay. And I will I will withdraw my second. Are you peaceful, Walter? Or you don't look peaceful. Oh, he's peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, that's funny. You know, this this would all no steam out of my ear. Okay. This You're would ultimately be a decision. That's on the record, Walter. <laughs> this would ultimately be a decision on the full board, but from my perspective, I have I think a good way to do this and actually be crystal clear with the voters would be to take our proposed reservations of the surplus and have an article um, which the voters would vote on um, do you approve the following in 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 display that chart or that have that thought if you want to put a note for yourself and the rest i actually have a different article note here too if you want to hold that thought we'll talk about it a little later in the year but if we start talking about articles now we're going to open a can of worms but i like the idea like we should talk about this when it comes to the articles I love that. Well, well, I think it's uh, it's all about clarity. It's all about you know transparency and clarity. And to me, that's probably the clearest, most transparent way to do it is put it right out there what our proposed reservations are, and ask the voters if they approve it. But but okay. just so to make clear, Walter, do you, if the voters if the, if the recommendation is to put. $60,000 in the capital reserve fund in the voters approves that. You're okay with that? You you believe that the stock board can go on the Okay. Okay, I'm going to call this one. We need to keep moving. But yeah. Uh, yep. Okay. Thanks for coming, Walter. Um, fiscal budget outlook. All right. Uh, our first pass at the budget. Um, first thing I want to point out, column AH for the FY23 six months, uh, given that it's November and it has not actually been six months, please be aware that this is not actually a six month average. This is where the six month average, right? The six month total will go when it's, when it's available. We just call it year to date. Sure. All right. 
Brian, um, when you um, when you get all your various worksheets put together for the various committees, you have in the past sent to me the spreadsheet for the historical society to work yep. on. Could you send that to Kelly Van Dorn? Kelly Van Dorn? Okay. Yes. That expenses being What's that? What's that? The expenses? Um, um, it's just a worksheet for committees yeah. that they can use for drafting their budget. It's it's expensing, estimated expense. Yeah. That really needs to go out to committees like did it already go out? I've already been in touch with committees uh, about what do you need for budgeting? Uh, so far, none of the committees have asked for worksheets, but. Uh, we're going to Thanksgiving and our next meeting will not be very far behind it and committees are probably not going to meet between now and then. So we need to get that out like ASAP. Yeah. Tomorrow. Um, sorry, I'm getting. Did, did you get a note from Lydia about that or no? Okay, I'll, I'll double check and we'll make sure that that gets out. Good response. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, a couple of the places where we know we've got pretty big discussion items. Uh, the highway capital fund. Um, Evan, you and I need to sit down and revisit the you had done some alternative planning on that, and I want to make that kind of presentation ready for the board when we do the highway budget. Uh, I've got some draft elements in here, but there's. I also want to see what larger changes uh, we might want to make. Um, I filled in a handful of these, like our town officers, our salaries lines, uh, who made the decision for that, and the, at least the board's proposal for next year makes that a lot easier to budget for in the future. So for office salaries, because there are no bargaining unit employees, that's pretty easy to, to fill in and, and work with. Um, what are you referring to? I was looking in particular at line 130. It's not, I think we could talk about like big ticket items. They get like in depth in depth, they just need to have it right. Yep. Are there any questions you have about budget? No. Mark? I'm fine. We're going to go through about 35 truckloads of trees that are coming up with the budget. Uh, yeah. That's true. I would like, uh, there was some discussion with last year's board. I would like all of the historic society items to be grouped together. I would almost like them to have their own header. Maybe we could do that by committee. Um, Any select board expenses possible? Why don't I share with you the worksheet that I have for his, the Historical Society? I would like each committee to have their own section. That was. That's not Brian, though. That's Rosemary. It's all well, these codes, all the coding. They, he could communicate with her or not. We've talked to Rosemary about this before, and it's a really a big lift. So it depends on when you want it. I don't think you're going to want it as quickly as you. I don't think, I, think you, I want it. I think you can't get, get it, it as quickly as you want it. Right. And I would like line items for each committee if we can get them grouped together for the expense of the Public Works Department doing projects for them. That way we could properly budget for it. And the taxpayers would know actual costs of each committee. Um, that would also come with public works department timesheets being changed, which we discussed during budget season, but it's not so much budget related, unless we have line items about it. It's not budget. Well, I it's think making your problems match your budget if that's what is. Wrong. I think we can do what you're talking about with the committees because this 
happens to do Excel and you can move things around to Excel. Oh, you know, I know someone that's really good at Excel, but do you know anybody? I might know someone. But I don't, the problem is we could rearrange it in Excel, but because it's not cost code through the memory software, like, yeah, you can search and replace and rearrange yeah, yeah. but it's not like yeah, for exactly. every future board or every future committee, it's very replicatable, you know. Uh, this either of us could get hit in a car accident tomorrow. But if it was laid out where as soon as she logged into the software and printed it, it would be right there. I understand your point. I think that's a conversation that we need to have with Rosemary's. Rosemary, what do you think? She's uh, not objecting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that it your is very <laughs> helpful for me to have these arranged by their code numbers uh, because that makes importing data from them right significantly easier. Okay, we're, okay, we're like, is this important right now? Well, we're not going to talk about specific items in fifteen minutes. We're talking about big picture things to get ready for the budget meeting. That's a big ticket. That's a fundamental. I will issue. organize this however you want to organize for that discussion. And I get it doesn't give you everything you want, but it'll give you something you want. Okay, great. Well, Can't wait to see it. Do you want? I, I mean, the point is every time that you go to the software, it's going to need to be rearranged every single time. But we're not going to have a process to do that every time. The reality is that's not going to do those code. All of that coding is not going to change. But Rosemary has said adding codes is extremely easy. It's deleting them or moving them. So she could add underneath select board expenses or wherever a line for uh, state park committee. And then we lose the history because she can't move it over. So, okay, fine. Like, get, write up whatever you want for changes and let's well, talk about them rather than just rattling them off right now. Because you're the only that's one who's biggest, following what you're talking that's about. That's the biggest one that I would like. I would the like historical to, society specifically. No, I said committees, but I did use the historical society as my first example because we discussed them specifically last year. But if they were organized and each committee had an allotment of public works hours, um, that would be predictable and trackable. I think that would actually be better off for the taxpayers and future select boards. Okay. Better off because we have a true sense of expenses and for each committee, plus you could have a predictable amount um, as grant work comes up and everything. Uh, certain committees eat up a lot of public works hours. Well, that's what I'm one you, so you're concerned about the expense side of the committees now. Well, there's not much revenue side of it. So <laughs> we can rearrange that side real fast. <laughs> yeah. These are already subdivided for the most part. Couldn't that be accomplished fairly easily by adding codes to, I mean, if, if your ultimate goal is to figure out how much time is being spent by the public works by committee or by project, couldn't that be done by adding codes to the- Can we not talk about this? Sorry, but like, we have to talk about our budget and like, what is the bottom line? We are, we've been talking about for the past couple months, things that people are asking for. They're asking for more expenses for a landscaper. They're asking for more expenses for all of these other things. We know our costs are going up. Like, what is the money showing us here? I, what, because we didn't start off line by line on everything. I didn't assume we were going line by line on everything. I don't want to go line by line either. I just want to know big picture. Like Brian, what are you seeing in numbers for revenue? What are you seeing in numbers for expenses? Where is your area, your concern, area of concern? Revenue. I think our revenue side is pretty good for uh, next year. I'm not anticipating any major changes here. We might you know, tweak a little bit around the edges. Uh, we have to get cost estimates on a couple of our highway projects. We did some of that work. So I think it's just going to be pulling the paperwork we did on for, uh, was it Overhill or Ben Over? 
but pulling the work we did on Overhill last year and just do we need to change anything or or, or not? So we, we've done a lot of the work for that. So revenue, we're in good shape and I think it's going to be uh, not a very difficult lift to process revenue. On the expense side, uh, places that I have kind of outstanding concerns are our animal control and health officers that we've talked a few times about changing the way we handle their reimbursements. Um, in particular for health officers, the uh, the health calls often take a number of follow-up appointments that, that they've said that they don't, they don't feel they're very fairly compensated for them because we pay for those primarily out of a stipend rather than per incident. So if they get a stipend and they've got to revisit the same house four or five, six times or more with certain properties that we've been dealing with, you know, for multiple years, um, that's difficult for them. Can you tell me what, um, these are areas of concern that seem like really minor expenses. It's not going to be a big change. Are we talking like $3,000 or $5,000? Yeah, I would say $5,000 or less uh, for the health officers, but it's not, it's a change that the board needs to be involved in. I, I understand that. I'm just wondering. I'm with that big, <laughs> big picture things. So are there are next big picture things that are more dramatic than $5,000? The big, you, sorry, Eric. If you talk, well, I was just going to say, if you're talking big picture items, the Pentagon of the town is the highway department. And you better <laughs> expect that we are going to have to see increases of about what inflation is. Anything less than that, and you're actually making cuts. Is this the only one? I so, I, I yeah I agree with that. Yeah. yeah yeah although emergency services is emergency services is a significant of part of our budget yeah uh, and we need to get that. final numbers from them on uh, and that's the combination of sheriff and members. sheriff sheriff yes. fire EMS sheriff fire and communication and communication. Uh, that's going to be our biggest one, and we don't have concrete numbers for that. So at our next budget meeting, the one we're actually dedicating to a budget, you'll have some proposed numbers in the 24 columns? Uh, or for a lot more of it. Uh, I'm not sure which ones are still going to be outstanding at this point, but I'll be working on uh, on request and, and trying to get them in. So our revenue has gone down more as a known than the health officers have gone up as a potential known. That's true. Yes. I do not want to feel naked when we talk about these numbers. <laughs> All right. Is that what you wanted for this meeting, Beth? Or? Well, there's some other big items. We know about salary. Salary always impacts expenses. We know that the sheriff's department is very specifically, sheriff's department specifically between patrol and communications is like 45% of our budget. It's a lot, I forget the exact number, but it's right around there. Um, and we know that's gonna increase significantly. So I just wanna know like other other things out there. So we've got a couple more increases along um, with our, Highway budget. There, there are going to be, we've been pretty close to level funding that for a number of years and we're kind of running out of, uh, uh, if you'll forgive the pun, we're running out of road on the highway department. That was a good one. Yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> um, so I, I think that we can express, expect some pretty, a pretty good increase on. on, on what about that. highway? On highway. Um, like what's the big things around highway? Paving. Paving? Paving, equipment. Uh, yep. Our dust control, we've been reducing. We've had a couple uh, different ideas about ways to reduce uh, mud abatement and ways to reduce costs there. Uh, those two are both going to kind of need a decent increase this year. Um, yeah. 
Take it. Heating. Heating. Uh, thank you. That was a big project that I want to uh, try and get under next year's budget is uh, major work on the HVAC system at the uh, town garage. Uh, in particular, I mean, we wouldn't see a significant increase if we just installed a separate water heater and just connected that from the boiler system uh, that we currently have. Significant increase or reduction? Significant increase in savings, so okay. decrease so in cost. I agree. I, I actually printed out the efficiency right now. But, but we need to replace that boiler. Yes. So that's our. I need to. Um, I know that the office app, uh, we're going to, there's going to be a few requests there for equipment, uh, in particular, uh, large format printer and scanner. Uh, I think that Rosemary and the office app are going to be asking for. Um, and uh, uh, building maintenance in general, there, there's quite a few projects that we could do with the building. Um, in addition to the the highway garage, well, and I would say just put together, but you know, the process has always been yeah, you put together your wish list, and at the end of the day, yep. we end up with a budget at some point or a proposed budget. And I, I would say that you know, to some of the big ticket items like the sheriff, where we don't necessarily know a number, but something at it. Yeah, I can provide estimates for this and I can mark what's my estimate and what's a given number. Um, I think the, the last comment that I'd want to make on this is while we were, uh, while we're reviewing the budget and going over this this year, um, this is a good opportunity for us to also think about the board's priorities and for you to think about how how our budget reflects the priorities that you have for yourself. Um, but we can, December 5th is pretty well dedicated to the budget. Um, we can try and tackle high, we try and tackle all of it at once. We could split up, you know, depending on how late you want the meeting to be, we can do non highway and highway another time. I think one meeting on revenue and non highway will be April. I think that that is more realistic. So we do just revenue, revenue and non highway, and non highway expenses. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You know, all of revenue, highway doesn't provide much revenue. Uh, right. So we can do all of revenue and then try and, and then do non highway. Is highway revenue the state aid and stuff? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We get, uh, we get state aid and we get grants. Back. All right. I'm looking at it right now. That pilot payment's kind of important, isn't it? It is. It's too bad it's underfunded. Yeah, I don't I don't know if you have the ability on the printer to do these little I can't I can't read what's in black at all. Yeah, I can do these in color. Uh, you can use a light, a light color and that would be. I can yeah, either print them in color or select a um, gray that's more conducive. Brian had asked in our next meeting if we wanted to try to tackle everything, and I had said revenue and non highway expenses were a better idea. Do you guys adopt? I agree. Okay. All right. I agree, and we shouldn't talk about every single thing. Some things don't matter. Be able to talk about it. Be sure. I'm positive. We we've done that before, and it's awful. And there's nothing to talk about. So we we shouldn't talk about everything. If there's no change, why talk about it? Maybe there should be change. Well, then study ahead of time and bring it up if we need to change. I think we should but, do 
item by item, but some of us may be no conversation with this. If we all come to the budget room with what we think needs to be changed on our own lines, we're going to be going with them. Line number eight, line number 70, line number 26, line number one. Line order, eight, line number somebody think. Everyone's oh. going to have a comment on something. For sure. Why don't we try and do it by section unless there's a comment? Sure. We'll try something new. No. I think, I think it's fine. No, we'll probably have to stop in most sections, but that might let us skip over some. Or not skip over, but proceed more quickly over some. All right. Um, Get on this item for tonight. Looks like it. Right. Okay. Weight limits. Next up are weight limits for. <clears throat> is this what you and Jason have come up with, or is this just going to look like it first? Uh, this is this has been unchanged for quite a while. These are the, the road and weight limits that we've posted for I quite some time. Personally, not speaking for the board, um, I don't see the point in even wasting the money printing this paperwork because we cannot issue fines if anybody is given special permission. They were saying we should do about being posting them. I don't know if it's worth the time that we pay the guys to put the signs up and the paperwork. That we put <laughs> what if we do I've it? Done some research and oh. talked with uh, you know, the email with the state police and the DMV department. Of DMV. A big thing for me was the amount that we had spent on in spring on the roads because they were nobody was following the weight limits. Um, how we're currently doing it. Um, I was pretty much informed. We have nothing to stand on anyways. Why? Uh, well, we'd have to get somebody here to weigh the vehicles if they weren't permitted agriculture and if anybody, even a fuel truck, was given special access throughout the course of any point in the spring that would negate pretty much everything. And we literally say, shall not operate on the following roads without special permission issue. We're not allowed to do that at all. Okay. Do we do it? Did you give any special permission last year? No special order. We do the first people around in the morning and roll the road up. All going to do the same thing. No. I don't think class by the special order, I guess. The state would. Yeah, so we do it every so I'm not saying posting them to keep some people honest is not the, a good idea. I just I don't it know is wasted money. I don't know how you keep the fuel first and get with us off and not make special permission for instant residents to get either out of fuel or out of well it's a safety issue. Yeah. By state <clears> or state law. It's not you. You the town doesn't have the ability to grant a special permit. No. How did that I, work if they were overweight? I had believed that we had limited authority, not none, but. Uh, we could take, I mean, this isn't going to go out until March, so we could discuss this again. Yeah, I was kind of wondering why Ryan, we're talking about this now. Ryan could. I'm mostly we're talking about it now so that we yeah, have time. Could you forward that correspondence with the yep. Department of Motor Vehicles or is that the state police? It's DMV, yeah. Okay. You could forward that to the rest of the board members, and this is something we could take up at a future meeting. 
We all have to go back. Are you okay with that, Duncan? It's February. In February. Eric? Yeah. We could take this up in February. It doesn't take you guys long to print these up now. Does it? When do you usually do the posting? Uh, it's like February, isn't it? Usually it's depending on whether it is around the first week of March. Yeah, February is fine. fine. <clears throat> Thank you for planning that. Good. Okay, next. All right. Uh, next up, uh, Jason and I did the first round of interviews with the public works candidates. Uh, we have a couple that we would like to advance to the select board. So the select board will need to schedule time to meet. November 24th. <laughs> I'm <day>. free. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, it, you never picked the date for the 18th. Is yeah, there we did. Sense, is there a sense of that I've stopped timing on this? You'd like to bring somebody on board December yeah. first or sooner than sooner. later? First. Sooner than later. Uh, we just thought tonight's meeting was going to go long enough that it there. wouldn't make sense to. Try and do it tonight. So we're having our ATV uh, meeting on the first. The first. I'm going to be in Boston that day. On oh, the first? Yep, because I didn't put it in my calendar either. Do we want to do both of them on that first? Both of what? Do the, you're saying you're not going to be here, though? Interviews? I won't be here. It's, yeah. You won't be here for the ATV meeting? <laughs> Nope. Yeah. <laughs> I can join remotely. Um, but a lot of people have November 30th open as well. well. That's too back to back. I am going to be, I'm leaving for Boston on the, the morning of the 30th gotcha. early. And I'll be back on Friday. How about the 28th? Of December? Perfect. 28th of November. Yeah, I could do the 28th. I just, it has to be that's a next week later. Yep, it's a week from today. Yeah, let's do it. Six o'clock. I, I will uh, not be there. Will you be there? Do we, do we make the final decision? Does the select the select board traditionally makes the final decision with recommendations from uh, the public works supervisor? Uh, is it going to be a long meeting? I guess that's in your hands. <laughs> <laughs> the interviews take about 10 minutes apiece, and then we take about two hours to decide. <laughs> is that accurate? <laughs> I, we, we can spend a lot of time on things tonight. Honestly, we don't all need to be in the interview. I wouldn't, I don't care if I'm there. Or... Well, you should be there if you have questions because usually we go into executive session to discuss and come out. Yeah, we okay. Have, we, okay. Need, we should okay. probably need to have a quorum. <clears throat> yep, fine. That's good. Should, yep, fine. Let's do it. <clears throat> okay, the 28th at 5 30, 6 o'clock. I can't do 5 30, 6 o'clock. I could do 6, 6 o'clock on the 28th. Okay. Is that what you're saying? It doesn't matter. So yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. I know. You know, minimum wage is going up. What does that have to do with select board meetings? We don't make we don't make I got you right away. But I got with the head of them. Uh, I guess are we scheduled? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, we have to um, just verify six, the candidates. Yeah, 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 okay, six o'clock. Six o'clock on the you can verify with it. The candidates going Jason. Yep. It's in my brain right now. All right. Well, we're good with that. Are we? Yeah. yeah. Are you happy? I'm, I'm happy. totally Put that, that in your calendar. calendar. Huh? <laughs> you you got three meetings that week, you know, Evan. Three meetings that week? Oh, you have a you have a the thirtieth, we got a union meeting, and the first is the ATV, and the twenty eighth is the interview. You're right. I forgot about the. Uh, what if I 
get in a car accident that week. What if your seat is canceled? <laughs> if we have a COVID outbreak, you're and you're, you're not going to be there for the ATV. I'm meeting. like on the two and a half weeks after a cold. Uh, I don't, yeah, I know. I'm wondering if we should too. Sorry. I mean, is there any urgency on the ATV meeting? Oh. Being that these will both be public meetings, you can't. And they're special meetings, so there has to be 24 hours advance notice, anyways. Literally. Could we decide this? What about the agenda goes out? Could we do like combine the ATV and the interviews? Oh, strictly speaking, it would be the whole thing. Yeah, we'd never. You, that wasn't where you were going. No, it's going with um, you know, Beth could send out one of those surveys, we could fill it out <laughs> the date we selected, and then yeah, I'll do it. Oh, yeah, okay. And then as long as it was born properly, we don't need to select a date. Yet. So is it <laughs> not the <clears throat> six o'clock on the 28th? Or... The You're talking about the ATV. We're talking yeah, about the ATV meeting. Okay. That isn't out in the public. Well, no, we haven't meeting. circulated that one yet. I mean it, it's in our minutes, so I'm going to leave it in my calendar for now, but hey, I can hardly wait. <laughs> Beth, are you um, spreading COVID? No, I'm not. I've had this has been like this you're is like spreading two, germs. two, two and, and a half germs. weeks later. I am. Well, <clears throat> more, more, you're sitting next to her. You should be more conscious than me. I'm like way ahead of. I think I'm, I'm maybe like six years feet away. <laughs> You had a cold a couple of weeks back. I did. So I'm going to ask. Mine is from to the keep us moving. Anyway, yes, thank you. Executive session. Yep. We're in on the 28th. Six o'clock on the 28th. We're, out on, we're out on the 1st. Well, I'm leaving it in my brain. I'm leaving, so, it, I'm leaving it in the calendar. I won't be able to the 1st for sure. I'll send an updated uh, survey. Okay. Executive session. <clears throat> to review, discuss and play reviews. I'm all turned to enter executive session to discuss employee reviews as allowed by one BSA 313A3. We have a motion to a second. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. Okay.